I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through how to do spirograph designs, and we're gonna use the Rotate Copies tool. It's one of the path effects, and it's very easy to do. I'm gonna call this a beginner tutorial. If you're just getting started with Inkscape, this is one of the tools built in to the software that you might not know where it is or how to use it, but it's so easy once you get the hang of it, you can do all sorts of stuff like this. I call this thing Echo Suns, and we'll make it at the end. It's super, super easy. But let's walk through the basics first. If you're gonna follow along, I'm on the template, which is called A4 on the welcome screen. It's 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. I'm not gonna use this area, but it will give you the right ratio if you're gonna play along. So let's go over the tool. The first thing you have to do is where are path effects? Actually, what are path effects? Basically, it's a menu of advanced functions that you can do. So if I have a path right here, a circle, I'll click on it, go up to path, path effects, and you'll see in the sidebar, the tab will open up. But the, where's the menu? If you have the plus down here, you'll open up the menu. If you don't see the plus, it means you forgot to click your object. So click on the plus, and here is the menu. Now the menu is always changing depending on how wide your screen is. So your rotate copies may not be in the bottom right hand corner. So just look around for it. These are all different functions you can do. And we'll get into more of these later. But for today, rotate copies, click on that. And there you go, tutorial over. Actually, if you don't see this, let's go through the defaults first. On your menu, method normal, number of copies, the default is six, starting angle zero, rotation angle 60, the gap is a strange negative number, and you want to make sure you have distribute evenly clicked. If all that is the same, it's still not looking like that, it might be that your starting circle had a fill. So let's say this was day one, and you drew out your circle, and it looked just like the way we had it. Go to fill and stroke. If you don't have your fill and stroke menu, go up to object, fill and stroke. On fill, it looks the same, but you have a white fill. See, your circle is opaque. So to get rid of that on fill, click on the X. Now you're see-through. Delete. Back to our original, if I click on it, let's try, that six copies, let's try 12, enter. A little bit more elaborate. And you can do modifications with the edit paths by node right here. So if you click there, you'll see some new nodes appear. The ones to take note of, this square up top, that's gonna change the original shape. So if I pull it down, I can make it more oval. Control Z. The center diamond is the most important one for today. You can control how tightly packed the copies are. You can also affect the pattern itself, which is what we're gonna explore next by moving the center diamond. It's easy to get carried away when you're making these spirographs if you just start spinning that center diamond around. So I'm gonna show you three easy ways to control the overall look. The first is the actual shape you're starting with. The second is how many copies you make. And the third is which direction you're gonna pull that center diamond. Example one, I have a circle here. There is no fill, it's just a very thin stroke. So on the fill and stroke menu, I'm on 0 0.20 millimeters. Let's go to path effects. Again, if you don't have it open, go to path, path effects. The plus will bring up your menu, rotate copies, and I'm gonna do 75 copies, enter. <laughs> I mean, I laugh because this is my favorite part of Inkscape. This is just math, and the math gives us art. Unrefined right now, but it gives us something to play with. We'll come back to this rather than modify that one. Let's go to this hexagon and see how shape modifies our spirograph. I'll go to the plus sign, find rotate copies, and we'll do 75 on this one as well. Okay, you get a lot more action. So that's just the difference of shape between a circle and a hexagon. Now we'll do a directional change. Go to Edit Paths by Node. Without going too in depth with all the different variations you can do, let's first just go left and right and see what happens. I'll hold Control, which will lock in my horizontal axis. I've got the diamond selected. I go to the right. It tightens everything up. If I go back to center and then to the left, it expands everything. Now, if you keep going, it'll go back around again. So there's tight, then up to expansion. But just a way you can kind of visualize when you start to play with this, just do left and right and see the contraction and expansion. Same thing for up and down. If I hold control to lock in the vertical axis, I'll go up, expansion, makes a bigger diameter, down. It actually kind of like condenses on itself. 
So a lot of times when you get started with Spirograph, it's kind of fun, but you don't know where you're going with it. And if you think about how the directions on a basic level work, you can have more control over what you're producing. I think I'll skip ahead. I made more exercises here, but I want to show you this. If you want to screen capture this, this is an oval just to show you in one shot, like a screenshot even if you want to reference this. This is 25 copies going to the left, 50 copies to the left, 100 copies to the left. This is an oval going down. See how it affects it, just the direction you pull that center diamond. And then my favorite was taking this oval, they're all the same oval, 25, 50, and then 100. Let me zoom in on this. This is what we're gonna make my artwork that I called Echo Suns, whatever I called it. It's so simple. I'll take my 0 0.20 millimeter oval. I'll go to my path effects plus down here, rotate copies, 100 copies, enter. There's my starting point, edit paths by node. I know I have to go up on a diagonal. And there it is. You can reproduce, it's not all random anymore if you just follow your own guidelines. One more exercise before we go to the final R project. You can take your spirograph and change the color with the fill and stroke menu on the stroke tab. I'll make it yellow, or you can put a gradient on there like this, which is fine, pretty simple. But you can also use the directionals when you pull that diamond to change how the colors appear in the spirograph. So let's do this example. Get rid of that for now. I've got three circles here, a teal, a red, and an orange. The path effects will only work if I group everything first. So I've got it all selected. Control G will group it. Rotate copies. I said 50 copies, enter, and it's pretty busy. Go to edit paths by node. If I pull it up, then you'll see orange is on the outside, and that can be a pretty cool pattern. Now if I pull it down, you can see the teal goes on the outside. So that's just a quick example to show if you're doing more colorful patterns, you control what goes where just by the direction you pull that center diamond. Okay, let's do some freestyle. I'm taking this oval, which is a 0.20 millimeter stroke. We'll rotate it 75 copies so we get this, my favorite spirograph. Clean this up. And I've got for my backdrop a black rectangle. I'm gonna do a mesh gradient on this to make things more interesting. So I'll click on it. This tool right here is Create and Edit Meshes. Click and drag anywhere in your rectangle and you'll see you have these gradient bars. For a linear gradient, if you've done that before, you just get one bar with a starting color and an ending color, and that's fine, but this gives you more options. You have a whole perimeter to play with, then an X axis and a Y axis. I'm gonna cheat with my color swatches. So first, I'm gonna take this upper left, I'll hold shift, upper right and lower right and make those black. The bottom down here, I'll click there, I'll do eyedropper, I want this blue. And I'll take this left node here, the center, I'm holding shift, and the right are gonna go with this orange. A Little bit ominous, but then now the cool part is, you can grab either these handles here or the center and bend it. It becomes a cross between the radial gradient and a multi-directional linear gradient. It gives you more flexibility. I think I want to add a little bit more orange. I'll take the top, hold shift, and the bottom. I'll do that. I'll eyeball that one. How about right there? That's good enough. All right, so unclick that. I'll take my original. Let's move this up in the corner off the edge a bit. I'll do control D so I have a second one. I'll change this one to maybe something more yellow. So stroke, fade it out, reduce the opacity a touch reposition these so they're just kissing right there. I'm gonna add a touch of blur because they're gonna be kind of set back. I'll take this one, control D, duplicate it, pop one down here in the corner, coming off the bottom. Change that to white. Control D, let's make the two big ones. I also wanna show you that you can still modify these. So if I go to edit paths by node, you can modify it on the fly. So I actually do like it pretty big, but I do wanna add a plain old linear gradient. So I'll click on stroke linear gradient, and now I get my handles. This side right here is my full opacity. I can change the color in a second. So I'll put full opacity at the bottom and the end point of the gradient is gonna fade out into full transparency. So I click on this. See how it goes to full transparency? I can pull the slider for opacity, transparency. Take it over here. Let's change the color to something really bright. And for my starting point, same thing, go to some bright yellow. <laughs> A couple off camera tweaks and I'll do my final spirograph, control D. And this will be my focal point. 
and I want it to kiss this circle and that circle. That way we have some balance among the chaos. And I'll change the color again to a yellow gold. And to draw the eye to this one in particular, I'll add more detail here. So first I'll do Control D to duplicate the whole thing. I'm gonna blur that one. See, it would add a little bit more interest. And my final touch will be, I'm gonna put a glowing ring on the inner perimeter. Now I could draw a circle with the circle tool, but I'm gonna use paint bucket. If you've been following along the tutorials, what was once my nemesis has now become a valued tool. To make it easy to see, what I'm about to do is I'll change the fill to a green, take the stroke off. All that means is paint bucket uses whatever fill and stroke you did last. So this green will show you what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna drop paint bucket inside the perimeter and it's going to make this exact shape without me having to size it visually with the circle tool. So I'm on visible colors threshold, actually one at 35 and grow and shrink by one pixel just to be safe. Click it once, see that? <laughs> now I can take this object, which perfectly fits, take the fill off, add my stroke of whatever I choose. I'll do a 1.0 millimeter and we'll make that bright white with the blur. Control D, duplicate that. The top final touch will be yellow and kick that one out, see where it goes. It went to 53, so that'll do it. There is our Spirograph. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope there was something you can take out of this. And if you have ideas for future videos, drop a comment in there. I am kicking around a paint bucket tutorial right now, but it's not there yet. See you next time.